Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I'll shortly be playing a clip of a conversation between me and my fiancé regarding social media and the pros and cons. Before I do that, I'd like to promote her work. My fiancé is big into fashion, clothes, all that sort of stuff. Not something I'm into, but she loves it. She has a sizable following on Instagram, you can see there. Slightly more than my 51 subscribers on YouTube at the time of recording this, but yeah. She puts a lot of effort into it, she loves it, she's good at what she does, so... If you go over, give her a, a like, or whatever it is on Instagram, a follow, I think. Follow her work. So this is going to be a discussion between the two of us today on the pros and cons of social media. Hope you find it interesting, and yeah, enjoy. Hi everyone, how are you doing? I'm here with my lovely fiance, Sandra. Sandra, how do you do? Very good, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. So we're debating today the positives and negatives of social media. I'm in the camp that it's more of a bad thing. Sandra, on the other hand, is in the view that it's a good thing. So we're going to have a conversation and see where this goes. I'm going to, you know sort her out, put her to shame, you know, with her view, her wrong view. So here we go. Um, to Sandra, mm-hmm. tell me why you think uh, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, why these are good things overall for society. Well, if you think about this, going a year back when there was lockdown, we, this is the only way we could connect to other people that you didn't, don't live with. Or, I mean, take us to, we wouldn't have met online we've met online and and we would never met if so Ooh, that's true actually we met on a dating app so um oh she sort of done we actually wouldn't have met if it weren't for social media is the da- is a dating app social media yes it is do you think isn't so? it online doesn't mean it's social media just being online I'll come back to you on that. You've, you've thrown a bit of a curveball there. I wasn't ready for that. You meant to you meant to build that up and throw it in later. But go on, carry I just, on. I thought I'd just get you now. <laughs> as we start. Instagram, TikTok, all that. Um, it did take off during lockdown as a fun thing, mm. as a as a way to get through of what sort of the curve that was thrown in our, at us. And um, I thought it was quite fun. I've joined it. I loved it. All the dancings and everything. It was great. Yeah. But um, Facebook, I thought, was sort of... It went down a little bit for me. I don't really use it. Instagram, on the other hand, I, I do sort of use it. But a lot of people use it for work. Um, I think TikTok was the big one yeah. during lockdown. 100%. Um, so... I can't do with that. I feel like TikTok was the big one during lockdown, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've had to disinstall, uninstall, whatever the word is, TikTok three times because I just found myself on it for 20, 30 minutes straight looking at rubbish, looking at dancing, looking at football videos, boxing videos. And a half an hour would pass and I'd be like, I've literally achieved nothing. Like, what have I done in the last half an hour? I could have been reading a book, you know, working out, doing some weights, any, like, literally anything. And I was just stuck to a screen in my room by myself doing that. What, what, what good's that? Well, that's not good for your mind, is it? No, but, I mean, you can only blame yourself that. It's you who's allowed that to do that. But they're, but they're designed to be so addictive. Yes. So it's hard. <laughs> yes. But you, as a human, train yourself how long you want to spend on it you don't have to nobody's forcing you to it's true but they've designed in such a way that obviously keeps people on them it's like youtube you know you watch a youtube video you're like okay i'll go to bed now or whatever you and the next one oh, the next one comes oh i want to watch this one as well <laughs> <laughs> it's just you're just stuck there and so these apps are so addictive and like i say i feel like i feel like it makes you stop doing stuff so facebook um i realize i'll just be scrolling through for 10 15 minutes and i'm like you know, I like certain pages. I'll be looking at, I don't know, Harry Potter stuff or sports stuff or the current affairs stuff, the news, whatever. But again, I'm not doing anything. I'm just, you know, you know, I've walked into rooms of people like our age and everyone's just on their phone. And you know, they're all on social media, they're not really playing games or anything. Go on the train now, everyone's just like this. So I've seen mothers ignore their children their little children on the train to work will be talking to them they'll be like hmm hmm completely blanking them that can't be a good long term thing we don't really know the long term effects of all of this shit I don't because it's the last 5-10 years it's new so what do you think about that? I see your point and I second that when it comes to mothers like they should give all their attention to kids because it doesn't give them 
sort of an idea of, of the 21st century that the world they're coming into this is all introduced like I used to play with Legos like during yeah. my childhood it's very different to what kids are sort of the way they're brought up now I get that but if you think about it what you're seeing on Facebook TikTok whatever you're looking through Google everything's connected and with whatever you're searching it basically that searching engine shows you later on it goes on Facebook Instagram whatever it's something that you've searched yourself this is what's going to be promoted on your phone so that's why you do spend longer on that phone because it shows you the stuff wait it shows you the stuff <laughs> that you I'm really listening. were interested in in the first place so hence that's why you waste your times as you say on the phone scrolling all through to what you initially searched in the first place I think that's a completely different conversation how these companies are able to yes, watch. Yes, very connected. No, no, it is. But this, that, you could talk about that for ages. Um, I know when I've bought, say, gifts for people in the past, and uh, it would then come up on my laptop afterwards, like a gift I've bought, and that gift would come up. So if that person was with me, <laughs> literally, I went out and, you know, Googling engagement rings, and then I'd got one, but then even two or three weeks after, they'd still be coming up on the side of my laptop yeah, or my phone. <laughs> And I'd be like, if Sandra, if Sandra had been next to me, she would have seen it, would have ruined it. And it's just like, that's an extreme example. But it's like, they know too much about us. But that's, you know, big brother, that's another conversation. Um, you spoke about the social media, what's the positive of it all? Well, think of it this way. LinkedIn is an amazing um, app, not program, app, <laughs> um, to find work. A lot of people rely on it. Um, yeah. Do you feel like, I think LinkedIn now, it's a lot of self-promotion, just mm. talking about me, and I don't like all that. I really liked LinkedIn before, but because it's slightly changed, I feel like the, the direction is very different now. Mm. It's split into two. There's still work, it's still got that I'm open to work, and it's great for recruitment, but I felt it just split into like me, I am... Um, I feel like this and I wouldn't have never said anything but I feel like a lot of people are saying things out loud and it's giving me a lot of confidence to speak about A and B and whatever mm. and I don't like that I used to go quite a lot on LinkedIn for jobs but because I see a lot of things popping up on my phone about like people do have cancer and stuff like that and yeah. um they speak about this and I feel alone and I don't have anybody which, which is a great sort of way to to sort of speak out and, yeah. and find other people who might be in a similar position but I feel like that might be different apps like Facebook would be a better option for, for the way I think about it rather than LinkedIn I don't I don't want to come across as a bad person or mean or something but it, I don't want to see <laughs> I don't want to see that on LinkedIn I wanted to see you know, opportunities I want to see like job related stuff in there that's the whole point of the purpose of LinkedIn, the LinkedIn I imagine yeah but um it's just me I think sometimes social media like it's like the internet in general social media can be done for good stuff but people just ruin it mm -hmm. I don't have Twitter but some of the stuff I see online about Twitter like the arguments and just the you know, political debates. You just see people going at each other. And no one, in the end, on Twitter, no one ever agrees with each other. No one's like, oh, okay, I'll take your point, sort of thing. Yes. It's, it's so toxic. And, and but a lot of you, like, a lot of people say how they feel on Twitter. Yeah. And um, it's just, and then later on, they do regret it and try to delete it. But whatever you put out there, it stays there. So we should be really careful of what you're trying to it's say. It's very true. You see footballers with old tweets, 10, 5th, well, I don't know how long, like 5, 10 years ago. Young lads, when they were 17, post stuff, and it's just brought up and mm. used against them in the media. It's very true. Um, another one I didn't like was Snapchat. I had Snapchat for a few months, what? and I felt like you were just watching people's lives. And a lot of fact that you might not be aware of right now, even till now on Snapchat, what you can do is, whoever's got it and doesn't enable it, um, sorry, disable it. Mm. Um, you have a map of where you are exactly. It will show you exactly in the world where are you now. Yeah, I don't like that. And um, <coughs> I don't so like if that. If you don't at know all. those things, you're opening yourself to so many things, really. Yeah, you don't like. So they're not giving you the option to opt out. They just do that to you. Yeah, but, but if you don't know about it, then you're just basically sharing those. That's things. what I mean. So what I'm saying is, if 
if you sign up to Snapchat now, your location's disclosed to whoever you've got Snapchat with, yeah? Well, they do ask for the sort of option of whether you would like to disclose the information, but unless you really are in it and... Paying attention. And know yeah. things about it. You, a lot of kids that tend to have phones right now, they're, not, they're very innocent and very naive, and they don't know about those things that they just share, share it out to the world. Yeah. So... I'd, I'd say as well with stuff like Facebook and the rest of it. I mean, I only tend to post stuff on Facebook when I go abroad on a holiday. That will nowadays. That's literally all I do. You get some people that post out like every time they go out, like once a week, twice a week. They'll be putting stuff off. They're going to Ascot or the football match, whatever. So I think if you're someone who's struggling with loneliness or you know some sort of depression, and you see you go on Facebook. And you see, no one's going to post pictures of themselves on Facebook when they've had a tough day. Like, if I had a tough day here and I was like, a bad day at work or whatever, I'm not going to post a picture of myself having a bad day. It's not real. Mm. These aren't real lives. Lives are full of up and downs. Like, we're only in our 20s, we know that. Let alone, we've not had kids or anything. We know, uh, we don't know half the stuff that's going to come in the future. But... Sure, but you do have to sort of um, be fully aware of what's on social media. It's not real life. It's, it's what real. people want you to perceive their life truly is but it isn't no, of course it's not so, um, it's, all, it's, all, it's all fake it, it's all fake it is but it's a way to sort of stay irrelevant it's 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 for make pe- it's for people to sort of make themselves feel better about who they sometimes wish to be who they sometimes but is that good that's not a good thing no but um, that's just fa- that's just kidding yourself because people know deep down they're not that's not their life even the ones posting that stuff know that yes but sometimes they can't help their life they have. Sometimes they might have limited choice. Like nobody really knows what's, like say, like one of your best friends, you don't really know how they truly feel. The only person that knows is them. Mm. And you don't know their any underlying problems that they have and they struggle with every day because a lot of people kid themselves and, and they don't want to admit it. You'd like to think, no, I, I'd, like, I'd say person. I'd like to think I do with my best friends, I feel like we're okay with talking to each other about stuff but not like you say not everyone is Mm. but I think it's better to talk to your best friends about your issues rather than posting something on Facebook to make yourself feel better about yourself yes but take it someone who doesn't really have friends or who really struggles with sharing because they might have social anxiety they they um let's say there is a person who doesn't have family who doesn't have any siblings it's just there. He's there by himself, and um, he doesn't have anybody to reach out to. A lot of men and some women don't want to reach out to psychologists or therapists because it just feels unmanly. It just feels like hurts their ego. I don't know, but could be whatever. Or they might not necessarily have the money to seek for one. And um, if you think about it, social media might be someone who they think their true friend is, which obviously we know there isn't, but you never know, you might meet someone who could be a good friend. A lot of people post on Instagram saying, oh, how do you like this? Or I'm having coffee and sipping, what, what do you like? And it's a way to interact with the other when they, not, when they might not have a physical friend to seek um, or to have a conversation with that, I don't know, like it could be something like that and that could be a way of they don't really feel by themselves or they don't feel as lonely because they have their follower, they have their friend, I don't know, when years later that could turn into a true friendship that they could meet up. Yes, you can meet creepy people at their course, <laughs> but you could actually meet real life people. That's true. So, I mean, because if you think... Would you say that if you're... If you've not got many friends that Facebook and social media is your worst enemy because it would resort you to staying at home, talking to people online and just not going out in the real world. There's no comparison between virtual chats and chatting to people in real life. Yes. I'd say, I'd say it could be more of a burden. I agree to a point because if you think about it, lockdown here, we couldn't physically, doesn't matter how much we want to do, we physically couldn't meet people um, and internet, sort of phones, uh, FaceTime, whatever was the only sort of thing to contact 
and、um, it it was not out of choice. It was a must. It was the only thing, and it sort of helped people keep keep on going. Yeah, it did. I guess that's an extreme example, but you are right. I'm trying to think if if during our childhood we'd had we had phones, obviously, like, but they cost like twenty p a call <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> that soon goes. I feel like another good thing. So, I don't really like to use Facebook, but it has opened up to a lot of things. Like, there's the marketplace, there's the events, there's so many things that you can sell. Like, let's say there's eBay for selling things, but it has opened to、uh, Facebook as well, which is a good thing because you can sort of share it amongst your friends. So that's a way to make business. <laughs> but、um, It's also got like years ago. I remember when I had my birthday. You just make an event. You invite all your friends. You show the location, and boom, all done. You don't necessarily have numbers to all those friends because sometimes you just write to each of them via messenger, and then that's it, really. And it's quite useful. I feel when it comes to, I don't know, having an event、uh, of like a birthday or a meet up as a social event. There's lots of I remember going to salsa events. This is a great place to meet other people. Some people who don't have a lot of friends, it's a great sort of way, a new way forward to meet new people.、Uh, someone who's an introvert、uh, struggles with things. Someone who's an ex- extrovert just goes about anywhere, but an introvert would struggle. And I feel like it, if you know the right way to use social media, is the way to go forward. But that's just me. So, if you think social media is a good thing. Go to Sandra. If you think social media is a bad thing, go with the loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Sandra, for taking part in that. That was very good.、Uh, I think、uh, I wiped the floor with you. But yeah. I hope you found that interesting, everyone. Please like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Many thanks. Bye.